My earliest hockey memories are being about 15 minutes north of here, up at St. Clair and Christie, playing street hockey just off of Christie on Ellsworth. We would cut out sponge from the sofas in the building when people throw them out, cut two little holes in them, and put the string around our legs, and those were my pads. Psychology of being a goalie is one for me that's very demanding. I would say the good part about it is I have old school parents, old school Caribbean parents with Caribbean slash British values, and a lot of the discipline I learned at home. So that's a lot of my framework. It's a lot of my moral compass that way. But playing the position, playing goal, is also very hyper demanding in that everybody's eyes are on you. When I was eight years old and we were playing at Chesswood or we were playing at North Toronto or we were playing anywhere, everybody's eyes were on me. I remember the odd time you let in a bad goal and you see parents, what's Kev doing? Parents of your, of your teammates. Some of your teammates look up, they're like, what's he doing back there? <laughs> He's got to make a save. That started at eight, but that never changed. That pressure, the expectations, the white hot spotlight of playing that position never changed from literally playing minor Adam, eight, nine years old, to Pee Wee, to junior in the OHL, to the minors, to the National Hockey League, it never changed and you have an opportunity to be a difference maker every time, every night, every game, every situation, you have an opportunity to be a difference maker. Those demands, that's, that's what drives you. That's what drove me to play the position. It's what drove me to stone my teammates in practice and want to make saves and get in their face and you know we could talk trash to each other. It's what drove me to want to be an NHL goalie and earn my keep in the league and, and be in the league for you know 12 years. Those are the same things that drive me to do television. I love the platform. I've always loved TV. You know, in our house growing up, my parents, even today, when I go to my parents' house, when I leave here up in Scarborough, they're gonna have the news now. They're gonna have CP24 on. The TV's always on at my parents' house. So we grew up with that, TV and music, and those two platforms. So I was always subconsciously really drawn to the camera. I loved it, I loved the art, I loved the art form, and I loved the craft. And in doing television, it's a huge responsibility. Uh, you know, as I'm sitting here with you, I, I feel like I'm, I could potentially be talking to as many as 30 million people, maybe 50, maybe 100, really, and people all around, around the world that'll tune in and watch this. And that's a huge privilege. I look at myself and I look at ourselves as being a conduit from the great players who are some of the best athletes in the world, our NHL players, uh, the voice of your adult weekend warriors, your rec league players, men and women, boys and girls that are in the game, coaches, you name it, ownerships. It's a big responsibility and I take it very seriously. And as I said, we're the conduit between those people and our great NHL fans around the world. The strength of our game is the greatness of it inherently, but as many people as possible to consume it and love it and want to play it and want to be a part of it and want to work in it and want to watch it and consume it in all these different ways. You know, that's what's transcendent about it. Uh, and, you know, that transcends gender, time, space, geography, uh, you name it. So uh, I really feel that um, that's really the strength of our game going forward is it's as good in somebody's living room in Paris as it is in Lisbon, as it is in London, UK, as it is in Wisconsin or New York.